be uh, heading her first game against uh, Sparks this season? Yeah, um, another good opportunity to obviously get better, grow. Um, we had some good experience playing Atlanta's guards, and so carrying over to this game with the Sparks, they have um, some guards who we have to try to contain, to corral. Um, so it's important that we are, are focused in and locked in on our schemes with them. And um, offensively, obviously, moving the ball, taking care of the ball will be huge. Um, so it's a, another day, another game, another tough one as far as just going against a, a defensive a team with great prowess and just understanding that we have to stay locked in, um, stay sharp, and stay focused throughout the entire 40. Great. Thanks, Coach. Uh, Percy Allen, why don't you kick us off with questions uh, today? Go ahead, Percy. Awesome. Hey, Coach, I forfeit July. First off, um, and just, just wondering, what is uh, Jewel Lloyd's availability for tonight? Um, yeah, you know, we um, she was kind of 50-50 coming into today. Um, she's getting better, actually progressing, um, but we are just thinking about holding her out for tonight, um, just making sure she's feeling um, 100% and not just um, half halfway there. So that's kind of where we're leaning toward. And then, so if she's unable to go, who starts? And how are you guys different without Jewel? Yeah, obviously, we're very different because um, Jewel brings so much, not only the offensive end, but just defensively. She's the one who's been on the tougher matchups, of, uh, especially with the guards. Um, obviously, a great guard rebounder as well, and just a floor, a floor leader out there. Um, we will probably lean toward going uh, with Epiphany, um, sliding into that two spot. Um, obviously, Steph has done a great job as well. Um, and KB had some great minutes the other day as well. So we have a lot of good reinforcements that we can go to um, to kind of makeshift uh, the, 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 I want to say loss of Jewel, makeshift the game without Jewel. Um, but obviously, it's, it's going to be by committee. It's not going to be one person. And hopefully, we can kind of fill those gaps. Hey, and then, Doug, hey, um, when you're on the road, it's like normally players who deal with a large ticket request. How many <laughs> folks do you have at tonight's game? Um, yeah, you know, I kind of, uh, I didn't want to be too greedy on the tickets. And honestly, I have a small core group coming, but I know Jordan and KB and I've, and Katie Lou as well have um, that that support system, I'll leave it up to Jeff to kind of <laughs> divvy out the tickets, you know. So, you know, um, I think we'll have a lot of support today. You're probably have like half of LA, right? <laughs> <laughs> you already know, Percy. <laughs> All right. All right, coach. Thank you. All right. See you. All right. Thanks. So let's go to uh, Anna or Anna, excuse me. Uh, is that Anna? Anna. Excuse me, oh, Anna, Anna. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Hey, Coach. Uh, yeah, obviously, you know, there's a game to be played here, but how special is it for you to, to come home for the first time as a head coach? Yeah, it's special. And honestly, I hadn't even thought about it as coming home as a head coach more so than just coming home and being able to see my mom, my sister, um, my niece just had a baby. So looking forward to just kind of seeing just the family, you know, and Obviously, basketball takes precedence over everything, but there's just a calming presence that comes with being at home um, and some familiarity with that. Obviously, the bigger picture is that um, I have a leadership role that uh, I didn't have the last time I came to LA. And within that becomes for me, just focus, focus on the game, focus on the things that we need to do to to be successful against the Sparks. And so just trying to try, try to compartmentalize in a way, but understanding that there is some comfort in being at home. All right, thanks on that. Um, Jeff Brown, go ahead, Jeff. Hey coach, um, so what, with Jules' injury, did that take place against Atlanta or was that previous against Vegas? Um, yes, in Atlanta, I um, think she kind of tweaked something, um, and so she kind of got it out. I don't, I can't really tell. I don't rem remember what exact part in the game, but I, I do remember her kind of um, pulling up a little bit. But it was definitely before she made those big buckets. Um, so yeah, it was in that game. Okay, and then for tonight, what are like the most important things uh, that you have to do, like to stop LA? What do you, what are the keys there? 
Yeah, first and foremost, offensively, we have to take care of the ball. I'm going against a team who is a high turnover team, um, and they score a lot of points off of those turnovers. Um, majority of their points come from just their defensive presence. So that's first on the offensive end, um, you know, withstanding their initial pressure and on the backside of that, just getting good shots, moving the ball, setting good screens. Uh, pressure releases uh, back doors in order to, to, loosen, to loosen them up a little bit. Um, defensively, we have to, you know, they're, they're number one in unassisted field goals. So we have to understand our one-on-one -on -one defense is so crucial. Obviously, that comes with our team defense as well, making sure that um, we are rotating, we're on a string and finishing off plays with rebounds. Um, and, and then, you know, one thing that LA will do is foul. So again, once we once we withstand that initial aggression, get into the free throw line will be huge. Um, one other thing defensively is just making sure we contain Wheeler and, and Cooper's playing at a high level as well. Awesome. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Chef. Uh, go ahead, Em. Hi, Coach. Just wanted to lead off with, I'm sure you saw the Times article this morning about Maria Taylor and Rachel Nichols. I was just wondering if that sort of being such a common narrative that we see a lot around the sport, I was wondering if that sort of spoke to you at all um, and what your reaction to maybe Shell Reeve's co initial comments were as well. I actually haven't seen the article. Sorry, so I can't really comment on, on that. Just kind of very focused today, though I did hear. I haven't um, had time had time to look at that. Sorry, I can't comment on it. Yeah, sure. yeah no problem. I'll save that for a later date. Um, with Lloyd, be then I'll go, go to something technical. With Lloyd being out, obviously she plays such a big role in the defense that the uh, the SOS system that Klopenberg has put in is requires so much thought, right? So what kind of work does it take for a guard to come in and feel that, like not only physical, but intelligent of a role? Yeah, I mean, I, right off the bat, I think about Steph and her um, being very efficient defensively for us and very impactful defensively, even numbers wise. Steph and Sadie's are, are top in those categories for us. Um, I think about Piff. Um, Piff's a uh, steal to turnover ratio is always high. Um, her ability as a vet in this league to understand who she's guarding and use her physicality. Um, obviously with the SOS, with Pop system, it involves just uh, reading and the chemistry, which we are still um, very much learning each other, but we are able to learn each other in games, which has been very, very um, great to see without having much practice time. And so you add those players who are just cerebral and who are react, you know, reacting the way they're proactive um, defensively, talking on a string, and that enables um, them to step into those roles and be comfortable with our rotations, be comfortable with their matchups. Great. And then I just wanted to ask in that same vein, what what's what Stewie's versatility defensively and also her like intelligence in terms of knowing where to jump, knowing where to point other people how that helps that machine run? Yeah, it helps tremendously. What Stewie has done a very good job within the last couple of weeks is just talking more and understanding with her versatility. Um, she does have to be solid um, when, when she gets on those switches. Ultimately she's, ultimately, she's an excellent shot blocker. And so anchoring the defense, you have to be the eyes, you have to talk, you have to communicate. And a lot of the time she's just cleaning up those either defensive miscues or those hard drives. Um, so it's good to have her her versatility um, on the defensive end as well. We already know what she can do on offense. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you after the game. Thanks.